Cold Front, written by Pasquiot. It always happens on nights like this. Outside, the rain pounds so hard that I can't tell it from thunder. We live on one of those lower clouds, below the rain. We can't afford any better. Mom and Dad work so hard. I know they do. Dad still finds time to take me to hookball games or junior speedsters or Wonderbolt shows. He even comes over to school on his lunch break so he can eat with me. Mom can't. She works days and evenings, long shifts, and she does it for me. I know she does. She says so. But it always happens on nights like this. I can't see. It's too dark in here, and my eyes haven't adjusted yet. Dad told me to stay in the closet, no matter what. He said not to make a sound, not to open the door for any pony, not to cry. That wouldn't happen anyway. I never cry. I rubbed the bruise on my cheek from last time, only three days ago. It doesn't hurt anymore. I could take it. The weather service usually goes months between storms this hard, but only three days. I know she's sorry. She says so. She cries, but I don't. I never cry. Every time, the next morning, before she goes to work, she'll apologize, and she says it to Dad too, but not bruises. He, he gets a, he gets a swollen eye. Once, a broken collarbone. He tells her it's not my fault. I can hear him. It only makes her matter. It always happens on nights like this. The front door slams, and I jump, but I hold my hoof over my mouth. I'm supposed to stay quiet. Hi, honey, Dad says. I have some soup almost ready. Why don't you go lie down on that couch and I'll give you a neck rub while it simmers? Don't patronize me, Mom says. Why won't she ever let her do something nice for her? She always twists it. I do hear the sound of her flopping onto the couch. Maybe this time, this time, it will be different. Where's Scootaloo? My wings twitch, and I huddle into the pile of winter coats. At the neighbors. It's dinner time, Mom growls. She knows she's supposed to be home when I have to work late. These storms don't make themselves. I used to stay overnight with my friends, or have dinner with them. That was a long time ago. I have to watch the clock now. It's okay. It could just be us tonight. It always happens on nights like this. A loud bang, and I grit my teeth. Water sloshes on the floor. Glass breaks. Some pony cries out. You think I slave at work so my daughter can ignore the rules? She roars. No, no, it's okay. Please, just calm down. I clench my jaw and cover my ears. It doesn't help. It never helps. I have to hold still, or else she'll hear me. Maybe. If she does hear me, she won't be so angry with Dad. It's, it's not fair. It's not fair for him. I am here, not at the neighbors, and I'll just tell her, and say that I wanted to surprise her, and that I love her. It was just a little prank, and I made Dad do it, and I'm sorry. This is my home. I pay the bills around here, and I won't have you undermining my authority with Scootaloo. More glass than a cabinet slams shut, and there's a loud thump. All right, all right, I'll go get her. I'll go get her, and we'll have dinner. I'll cook up some more soup. Just please, don't, don't be mad with her. It's not her fault. My hoops, they're shaking. And I can't see a little in here now, from the slit of light under the door. I can't just make out my hoops trembling, but I can't feel it. 
I just can't. No more words, just harsh screams, like a wolverine, over and over. It doesn't stop. It just doesn't stop. It's never been this bad before. Dull thuds, slowing now. Then, silence, except hoof steps, sometimes limping, sometimes sliding, coming toward the closet. Dad didn't know. I didn't want him to know, but I got a knife in the kitchen, in case he needed any help. He'd never think I would done something like that, that I could, but it's not fair for him. Some pony needs to look out for him. I don't cry. I never cry. The dying light glints off the blade. Don't come out, he said, for anything. I tightened my grip on the handle. Brace it with the other hoof. The doorknob turns. My breath catches into my throat. Slowly, the door opens, and I lunge. It always happens on nights like this. I can't tell the rain from the thunder, and I huddle into my closet. It's my own room anyway. None of the other kids in the group home ever come in here. The social workers made sure I had a room for myself. None of them know. A knock sounds at the bedroom door, and a shiver buckles my knees. You in there, Scoots? It's me, Rainbow Dash. I had to work late, but I figure we might get some popcorn and watch a movie. Sound good? My hooves won't hold still. Scootaloo? No. No. He doesn't deserve this. Leave that alone. Hoof steps. I have to keep quiet. But I can't. You hear? The receptionist hadn't signed you out. I grip my pocket knife. The hoof steps got closer. And I whimper. I... I miss Dad. Damn it. I miss Mom. Oh. Yeah. I guess you were weird out a little on stormy nights. You okay? Just some rain. Nothing to worry about. I had to help Dad. My whole body tenses. The doorknob turns. She doesn't ask. And I don't know what made her figure I needed it. But she just hugs me. And I love her for it. She doesn't ask. But I tell her anyway. And I cry. Finally, the end. Hello, every pony. Snuggets here. Congratulations for making it to the end of this video. As always, I definitely enjoy reading this fic to all of you. Alrighty then, let's start reviewing this fic. Okay, so here's this. Now, I believe that this fic's main component is all tone, which is very good and definitely makes you feel for Scootaloo here. But, there are a few things to be concerned about. For one, how did Scootaloo murder some pony on the household without her mother noticing? That doesn't seem to make sense. Her mother suddenly disappears, which makes me believe that she was killed as well. But, you have to keep in mind that it wouldn't make sense if the two corpses are unaccounted for. I definitely see where the author was going with this, especially in this fixed genre, but at least there has to be some kind of relevancy to where the bodies went. Also, to the point where Rainbow Dash didn't notice her absence of her parents on a late stormy night, it doesn't add up either. This is a common mistake. Make sure, no matter how imaginative a story can be, it still needs to stick to reality. Here's another mistake. Every sentence seems to start with, I and from the format of the story as a first-person narrative, it is also a common mistake. The reason why I say this is because using I too much doesn't open for other feelings, which is crucial to a format like this, especially when you're incorporating figurative language. The vocabulary and structure of the story definitely helped it become what it tends to make the reader feel, but the author can do a lot better with this story. Overall, this story was pretty decent, I definitely enjoyed reading it, but I suggest the author to do a lot more to meet the fullest potential of the story. 
Alright, let's wrap this video up. Today marks the 5th month of the channel. And as of this video, I have 79 subscribers. Thank you all so much for your support. It's been a great 5 months. This channel is almost up to 100 subscribers and that is just amazing. I'd like to thank each and every one of you and I wouldn't have gone this far without you all. But wait, there's more. It's officially the summer for me, which means more time to make videos. I'll release a channel update later so you can get an idea of what's coming up on the channel. And I'd like to announce that the first written analysis series video will release next week. So now the reviews will be separate. Hope you all look forward to it. Aside from that, thank you for listening fellow viewer. And if you liked the video, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I make weekly fabric reads every Saturday on a variety of genres. Alright, that's it for me. This is Snogrits, signing out.